Hello everybody, this is Mr. Davidson. Hope you're having a terrific day. Um, what we're going to be doing in the next couple of days, couple of class meetings, is we're going to be talking about how to write a persuasive argument or a persuasive paragraph. And I just need you to remember that all paragraphs include the same sorts of things. That's one of the wonderful things about writing. It all They all include a thesis or some sort of a claim and also they include topic sentences plus details. So when we talk about writing a persuasive argument, what I want you to do is I want you to think about uh, some something that really uh, excites you, something that you're really passionate about. For example, in class, we talked about gun control. We talked about abortion. We talked about all kinds of things that kind of invoke an emotional response. And part of that is pathos, logos, and ethos. And we're going to be talking about those three things next week. So what I want you to do is I want you to write an argumentative paragraph using something called the tricap formula. Okay, what the heck is that? Well, giving arguments, of course, is part of what you do academically. It's something that you need to try to master. And so what I want you to do is I want you to use this formula to write a paragraph, one paragraph, about something that you're passionate about. So you'll pick one of those arguments and you'll talk about it from a persuasive point of view. So let's look at what this means. Okay, what you're going to do is you want to first understand what a good argument consists of. Uh, it's primarily to try to convince your reader that your uh, persuasive argument is valid. Therefore, what you need to do is you need to include the why. You need to make that claim. So here's what these things stand for. For example, TRICAP stands for T, topic sentence, R, it's restrict restrictive. So what you're doing is specifically restricting the scope of your argument so you don't have to argue everything in the world. You just pick a couple of things about the argument that you think would persuade your audience. So therefore, you're going to have to go to procon.org and you're going to have to pick out two citations, two resources. It can be any resource in there having to do with your topic, but that's got to be included in the paragraph. You've got to include a works cited component at the bottom. It needs to have an illustration. For example, when I say illustration, you are illustrating what your claim is. So that's why you use this transition, for example. Then you have to include at least one quote. For example, in your paragraph, you would have parentheses, the name of the person that you are quoting, and any page number after that. The other part of this is something called the analysis. You explain how I and Q prove T. So how does your illustration, how does your quote prove your topic? So what? Lastly, your point. Your point sentence is the call to action. It is the way that you are trying to not only convince your audience of the persuasive uh, reality of your argument, but you're also trying to call them to some sort of action. For example, in the buckle up paragraph we read in class, it was to try to convince people it's important to buckle their seatbelts. So basically, uh, a tricap is a paragraph. Each letter equals a sentence within that paragraph. I want you to use this template. So first of all, you're going to write the T. It means the topic sentence. It needs to have a hook. It needs to have some sort of uh, you know, proposal that says what you are trying to argue about means something. So, for example, the death penalty is obviously wrong because it is unnecessarily cruel. And you would have to prove that it's unnecessarily cruel through the use of your illustrations and your quotes. Then you would write the R. And what that means is it stands for restriction. You should restrict your topic sentence. In other words, you don't want to make it so broad that you don't have the research to back it up. You would use this particular transition specifically. So you would say something like specifically the brutality of the death can inflict extreme pain upon the inmate. All right. The other thing that you want to do is you want to use I. It means the illustration or example. So the next sentence would be the example and you would say something like for example, for instance, or to illustrate. Let's take a look at what it would look like in this paragraph. For example, the electric chair can cause very, very painful burns if the cap is not attached properly, causing prolonged pain and suffering. 
Some of you might think that might be okay for somebody that gets the death penalty, but for the purposes of this discussion, that's what you would use. Then you would write the cue. You would find a quote or two from your research. Following the illustration up here, you would use a quote from a source that proves your example is relevant. You have to use appropriate punctuation. So you would say, according to one expert, comma, quote, you would provide the quotation here, unquote, then you would provide the author page number. So for example, according to one expert, you would probably use their name. You would use the author page number here only if you didn't um, include his name here. So for example, if you were going to say, according to one expert, Mr. Don Davidson from Colorado Mesa University, and you would put his quote here, then you would use the page. If you didn't say, Mr. Davidson, you said you would say something like according to one expert, then you would put Davidson comma page number in text citation. Hope that makes sense. You don't have to include the whole quote. You can isolate part of it. Also remember if it's over five lines in length, you have to indent to single space and indent the old quote five spaces. Then you would write the A. A means to analyze. Basically it would explain your example and it will explain how I and Q prove your reason. I hope that makes sense. Ask yourself, so what after the I and Q? Include a the answer to that question. So here we go. You would say something like, clearly, it would look like this. Clearly, if the inmate is burned severely during his execution, excessive pain is induced. Therefore, therefore, life without parole is a better solution. You could also, when using it, therefore, use a semicolon right here, and you would make a small t. That's how you make your sentences more interesting. Okay, so finally the p means your point. Your point being in this entire argument. Basically it sums it up. It can be a repetition of your first sentence. Remember how we talked about echo effects in writing. It's all the same whether you're writing an essay composed of many paragraphs or just a simple paragraph. They all should have topic sentences. They should all include some sort of attention getter or hook and also should sum up your first sentence. So you would use something like to conclude. Let's put it together. The death penalty is obviously wrong because it is unnecessarily cruel. Specifically, the brutality of the death can inflict extreme pain upon the inmate. For example, the electric chair can cause very painful burns if the cap is not attached properly, causing prolonged pain and suffering during the execution. Then finally, your transition word, clearly. If the inmate is burned severely during his execution, excessive pain is induced. Your last transition statement or your transition word is, therefore, life without parole is a better solution. To conclude, the death penalty is inhumane. Do you see how that last sentence uh, summarizes your first sentence. So that's a good rule of thumb when creating paragraphs. And I know many of you are going to be writing a argumentative or persuasive paragraph soon if you haven't done that already. And then down here I want you to include at least two citations at the end of the paragraph. Remember those citations need to be in alphabetical order based upon the last name of the author. So if you have questions about that contact me. So your job is to write, uh, first of all, select a topic that you think makes a good argument, something that you're passionate about, and then use this exact tricap template to write your paragraph. And then what you'll do is you'll submit that to me either in person or in the Dropbox that I have provided called Argumentative Paragraph. I hope that helps. Uh, this will not be due until next week on Thursday for this particular assignment. Uh, refer to D2L to get more information. Thank you and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.